Hello and welcome into another edition of Preferred Professionals of America. My name is Jay McFarland. Today's episode is brought to you by Preferred Health Magazine, Patient Preferred Physicians, and Surfside Real Estate Group in Boca Raton, Florida. I am so excited to introduce you to Sue Phillips. Now, she is a perfumer. That's one of the things that she does. But her story of coming to America, participating in the American dream, and now actually helping people with COVID. She's done so many things, and I can't wait for you to feel her passion and excitement and maybe participate in some of her projects. All right, Sue, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show today to talk about your career and especially some of the projects that you're working on right now. But before we do that, I'd love for you to share a little bit of your background. How did you get involved with uh, with perfume products? Is this something you always wanted to do when you were when you were a child? I would love to say that I spent my entire life waiting and being, <laughs> you know, wanted to be a perfumer. But the truth is, in life, one can never plan anything. And I'm so truthfully and happy to say that everything that I've done has literally been serendipitous. Not without hard work. It's been a lot of hard work, a lot of intention and intentionality. But truthfully, I never, ever thought I would be in the fragrance industry. Uh, I grew up in South Africa. At 10 years old, I was in a, act in a theatrical play. I got the acting bug and always thought I'd be in theater. And my life took a totally different trajectory. I came to America, fell in love with New York, and landed up in the cosmetic industry. And along the way, there were many, many different pathways. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's fascinating that you wanted to to be an actress. What was it that led you? You say you you ended up in the cosmetic industry. What? How did, did that happen? Describe a little bit more of that for us. Well, you know, when I came to New York to visit my brother, uh, I fell in love with the energy of South Af of of America and just felt that this was where I wanted to be because it was very challenging in South Africa in those days politically, and so I went to a headhunter. And he said to me, oh, forget acting. He said, we've got 20,000 out of work singers and actresses. We don't need another one. But what else can you do? And I told him that I'd done, my mother always said, have something to fall back on and do secretarial work before I was going into theater. And he said to me, were you any good? And by the way he asked the question, I knew that that was my entree into America. And I said, yes, I was great. So he introduced me to a... A, you know, a position. Uh, I had to get my green card and I did. And I worked really hard doing that. And at night I would enjoy my theatrical creativity and I would sing and act and dance at night with some of these um, off, off Broadway places. And during the day I worked really hard to get my green card. And then the same headhunter said to me, you know, Sue, with your theatrical background, you stand up in front of people and speak, you'd be great in training in the cosmetics industry. And I said, hmm, that's interesting. And I went for the interview and they hired me. But before they gave me the job officially, they said I had to be at Macy's, because I'm in New York, and to learn about customer relations, sales, how to deal with the customer, how to talk to the customer about fragrances. So I literally learned on the job. And I was there for three months. I wasn't very happy to be behind the counter for three months, but it was excellent, excellent training. And then I became the national training director and I traveled around America setting up training stores, training, excuse me, training schools for the stores that were promoting and selling the Elizabeth Arden products, which were the high end perfumes at the time, Chloe and Lagerfeld and eventually Burberry's. And it was great. I got to learn about America. I got to enjoy standing up and, quote, performing and training people about the beautiful nuances and magic and mystery about fragrance. And um, that was really the start of my career in the cosmetic industry. Wow, it's such a, such a great story. You talk about serendipity, but it's also obvious you have a, an incredible passion for this. And and a great skill set to be able to, you know, present yourself and and to train in that way. How did you move from training to actually working on 
perfume products? Wonderful question. Thank you. So I really learned about fragrance on the job, but I had really studied um, with some of the fragrance houses as part of my orientation to learn about fragrance and ingredients. And then from there, um, from training, I went to product development for color cosmetics. So that was learning all about ingredients for fragrant for color cosmetics for cheeks and eyes and lips and nails all the girly girl stuff that women love to do and then they promoted me to product marketing for fragrance and so altogether i was at arden for six years and then lancome hired me as marketing director for fragrance and men's skin care and then tiffany hired me as vice president of marketing and i developed and launched the tiffany perfume so that was over a span of 12 years and during those 12 years, I learned so much about fragrance and ingredients and how fragrance makes you feel and also marketing and branding and positioning and strategy. And uh, again, if you'd have told me growing up in South Africa that I would be vice president of Tiffany and develop the Tiffany perfume, I would say it's not believable, but it was an amazing opportunity. And then along the way, I had my daughter and so I started my own company, which I called Center Prizes. And I was then retained to create fragrances for Burberry and Trish McAvoy and Avon and Lancaster and Dine from Furstenberg. And everything was going swimmingly, creating marketing and branding, positioning, fragrances, strategies. And then 2008 happened and the economy just collapsed. And I had to reinvent myself again. And this time I started my company, which I called, well, I called my, my company was Centerprises, but I started thinking about customization at a time when customization was really not considered at all. In fact, people said to me, what are you doing? Tupperware parties for perfume? And they laughed. And that was in 2010, 12. And now everybody knows that customization is so important it's all about branding it's all about positioning yourself in a way that reflects your individuality and your personality and to really help develop confidence through your own persona and that's how you look how you sound how you project yourself and how you smell and so customization has become very important and i've created custom fragrances for men and women, for corporations, for team building events, for major celebrities, Jamie Foxx, Katie Holmes, Zendaya, Susan Sarandon, all in the effort to really promote the power of perfume, which is the title of my book. <laughs> Absolutely. Tell us a little bit more about your book. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, there you see it up here. Yes. Well, again, you know, with serendipity. So when the when the pandemic happened, of course, all my team building and corporate events and all the consulting dried up again. So reinventing myself yet again, I said to myself, self, you've always written. I love to write and I've always really enjoyed writing articles about fragrance and I've always written. I was actually the beauty director of one of the magazines uh, for fragrance. And I thought it's time to put pen to paper. So I took the year of the pandemic and I wrote my book and I wasn't sure what to call it, but ultimately it was the power of perfume. It just came to me. And it's a compilation of so many articles and knowledge and history of fragrance that I've learned and gleaned over the years, which I think is an interesting read. It's a fun read. It's not that heavy but it's very much a synopsis of everything that you'd want to know about fragrance, if, you know, from the history of fragrance, why certain uh, decades were reflected by certain perfumes. You know, uh, the eighties was very big, bold perfumes, and it was a time of excess and a time of luxury. And then the nineties, everything retracted. So, you know, the economy shifted and then uh, the time of millennium, everything was all about, um, you know, um, transition and nostalgia and why certain fragrances had remained so successful, like the classics, the Shalimars, the Chanel's, the Arpeggias. So it went back to that. And then, of course, the whole idea of uh, designer fragrances and 
celebrity fragrances and then customization. So it's a whole sort of uh, historic overview about fragrance and how to wear it, how to choose it and how to enjoy it. That's it's really fascinating. I, I love how you talk about the power of perfume. I know when you put on a nice suit or a nice dress or a nice outfit, you carry yourself differently, right? You, it, it's Absolutely. empowering and perf you, the power of perfume is the same is basically what you're saying. You know, when somebody says to you and they hug you or they kiss you or they're around you and they say, ah, oh, what are you wearing? Mm -hmm. It's just such a fabulous, you know, sort of measure of you did the right thing. You look good, you sound good, you and you, you reflect your brand in a way that is very positive and it's confidence, you know, enduring. So you feel confident, you feel empowered, you feel so um, happy that, you know, your fragrance reflects who you are. So it's, it's, a, it's a lovely feeling of being confident when you wear a fragrance that really bespeaks of who you are. Yeah, I love that. You've worked on so many pro projects. Tell me about the Centarium. Uh, and it's different iterations. So after I left uh, Tiffany, oh, so wait, I have to go back in time. There's so many, there's so many juxtapositions and periods in my life. So when the economy changed in 2008 and all my consulting dried up, that was when I thought, you know, it's time to do something and to do something on my own. And I really didn't ever intend to have a quote perfume store, but more about an event space and again very serendipitous i went downtown to tribeca and i saw this lovely little oasis in the heart of tribeca that was a bit you know seedy and a little bit you know disheveled but i turned it into a beautiful place uh, with my mom's artwork and music and my beautiful couches with my you know fragrances and turned it into a magical place where people would come down the stairs and be enchanted with the experience and the environment. And for me, that's what fragrance is all about. It's, right. it's about the experience and the environment when you come into a space and it just sort of takes you over. And so uh, I was in the Centurion for almost 12 or 13 years. It was so much fun. I had, That's where I had people like Jamie Fox and Katie Holmes and Zadea come. Uh, we did corporate events and team building events and really created custom fragrances for many, many, many fragrance lovers. Well, sadly, in 2020, March, the Centurium had to close because they were closing the building because of the pandemic and nobody was going downtown. And so then I landed up going into a pop-up store on East 64th Street uh, at Vanessa Noel in her shoe boutique. And the Centurium was, an, was a place for people to come and explore and to create beautiful fragrances, to understand the magic and the mystery of fragrance and not to be rushed or hurried by going to a store and, you know, people trying different fragrances and saying, you know, try this, try this, try this, but not really explaining the ingredients or the different characteristics of fragrance. So it was really, I called it a centarium. It's like an emporium of scent and I called it the centarium. And, um, I'm still looking to recreate something like that uh, again, but right now I've transitioned and it's all about Sue Phillips fragrance, really creating the Sue Phillips brand about fragrance and uh, also what we're doing about helping people who've had COVID regain and rediscover their sense of smell. Yeah, this is one of the projects that I really wanted to hear more about from you is you talk about serendipity and here you are, you know, with fragrances and those types of things. And then a pandemic comes along and one of the primary side effects of that pandemic is people lose their sense of smell. And this is some somewhere where you have expertise and you actually found that you can help out. This is amazing to me. Well, again, it's, I have to say, I'm so blessed and I'm so grateful uh, for all the things that uh, have come my way, but also that I've been able to understand and sort of gravitate towards. So when I wrote the book, The Power of Perfume, uh, one of the big TV companies wanted to do a story. And the day before the interview, they called me, they said, Sue, do you think you can help a long hauler? 
And I wasn't quite sure what that even meant at the time. And they said, this young woman has lost her sense of smell for 13 months. And I said, look, I don't know, but I'll try it. So uh, she came to the, uh, the, the centarium and we talked and I took her on a fragrance journey. So these are all my blends right here. These are little small bottles, but I have much larger bottles. But the idea is I took her on a fragrance journey and she was able to use the blotter strips to dip the blotter strip into the perfume to evaluate. And it went from one to 12 to the, and finally on the 14th one, she smelled this. She said, oh, I smell something and it's beautiful. Mm. And she started to cry. And it was so powerful to have that emotion, that emotional breakthrough that she could smell. And so it kind of went viral and many, many people started to see the, the newsreel and contacted me. And that was in May of last year. To date, I've helped over 108 people regain their sense of smell. And so much so that I've now come up with a scent kit. So this is my scent healing kit, which are all the 18, whoops, which way? This way. There you go. The 18, the 18 perfumes, um, which are numbered from one to 18. And here's the little chart that shows you what it is. And they come with the blotter strips inside. And the idea is to help people really smell with their brain. You know, one of the things that I discovered along the way is that through the research I've done, our strongest sense is our sense of sight, but our most powerful is our sense of smell. Mm. And why is it? Well, from the second we're born, we smell. It's the first thing that connects us to our mothers. And that connection is so powerful. Babies, infants can recognize their mothers if the, there are many mothers and many babies. It's amazing. I've seen it happen. And so this was something that we, we take for granted. We take our sense of smell for granted because it's so automatic. You go, you, you talk, you smell, and you don't even think about it. And it's just something that's so automatic. So when you lose it, it's devastating. And this is what happens when people have lost their sense of smell. It's very, very frustrating, number one, because you can't smell anything dangerous. You can't smell smoke and you can't smell gas. Number two, you know, everything that we do revolves around food when we socialize. Let's meet for lunch, for breakfast, for tea, for celebration. And it's always there's always a food and a celebratory component. Well, if you can't enjoy your food, you can't smell, you can't taste, you say, I don't want to do that. Right. So that's, and then the third thing is when people are try to overcompensate for their anosmia, it's called anosmia, they either overeat because they want to try and smell and taste so much, or they lose weight because they're not interested. So I had a young girl who was actually 16 who lost 30 pounds. This young girl could not afford to lose 30 pounds. Mm. And it was devastating. Her mother was so upset. She met with me, she came to the studio and I was able to help her. Wow, that's such a fantastic story. Do, do you see that that methodology is now being applied on a much broader scale? It sounds like people are really paying attention to what you're doing. Luckily, and I'm touching wood, um, I'm working with neuroscientists right now. Uh, I'm writing my second book with a neuroscientist, Dr. Mila Emerald, and she is has been so, so forthcoming and so excited and so generous with her, her awareness and her enthusiasm for what I'm doing. And uh, another very, very well noted neuroscientist wants to do clinical trials with what I'm doing. So I'm excited about that. That's and, awesome. You know, so many people don't realize how many, how, how, how devastating it is. Eight years ago, I worked with a Dr. Henkin from the Smell and Taste Clinic in Washington, D.C. He told me then that about 25 million people a year lose their sense of smell from uh, car accidents, viral problems, pneumonia, all kinds of negative impacts to the sense of the olfactory bulb. Well, that was way before COVID. 
So the only really positive thing that COVID has done has accelerated the awareness of anosmia. And anosmia is the complete lack of sense of smell. And there are various versions of parosmia as a smell distortion and uh, all kinds of other sort of aspects of it. But smell and taste are very connected. So when people can't smell, they can't taste, and it really um, affects their, their well-being. Yeah, absolutely. I've also seen research that talks about fragrances used with autistic uh, people, uh, special needs, those types of things, how it can help them relax uh, and calm down. Is that something that you've, that you've worked with as well? I haven't worked with autism people, autistic people, but I have worked with Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. um, years ago, my mom sadly was afflicted with dementia and she was an amazing artist from South Africa. I talk about her in my book and I share some of my mom's beautiful paintings in my book. Um, and so Alzheimer's is very connected to you know the memory and, and, and obviously the brain um, is uh, impacted memory is impacted with Alzheimer's. So I've done a lot of work with Alzheimer's and fragrance. Um, but definitely fragrance can help trigger those memories and emotions. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I'll be walking along and I'll, I'll smell something and suddenly I'm remembering something that happened to me when I was 10 years old. And I, I don't know exactly what the scent was, but it took me back like a, like a time warp. You know, it's interesting you say that because I tell that to my clients all the time. And coming from South Africa, you know, every now and again, I'm in New York and I'll be walking along and then the change of season happens, like from spring to summer. And I'll be walking along maybe Central Park and I'll smell something and I'll stop dead in my tracks because I'm transported back to South Africa and I'm smelling what I smelled as a little girl. But And then it's fleeting, but it's there and it's very powerful. Yeah, it's 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 a time machine, absolutely. So I can see working with Alzheimer's and those types of people, that has to be a huge, huge benefit. What a fascinating story from wanting to be an actor to now getting in, involved in the in the commercial side of fragrances, but now in the medical side. Uh, I, I'm gonna guess you have a lot more projects too that you're working on. I have a lot more projects, and guess what, Jay? I'm back doing acting, which I'm so excited about. Oh, I'd love so, to hear that. So, again, during the pandemic, when everybody was binge-watching Netflix and all these shows, I was writing my book, and I have been part of a theater group uh, for the last five years, and we used to meet in person every Tuesday night. Well, then the pandemic happened, of course. We started to do Zoom. So there I was writing my book and at night would be in this theater group and um, landed up, uh, it's, it's ongoing with, with Zoom and I was cast in a play called Letters from Versailles and I played Queen Marie of Romania and I, <laughs> it's, it's so much fun. In fact, I have an app, it's called Sue Phillips app. It's available on the iPhone and Android and if people wanted to see my theatrical ability and enjoy the comedy called Letters from Versailles, it's actually on my app. Um, and I now have an app. Can you believe that? I, I it's amazing. App. <laughs> <laughs> that is a... it's, it's really about my world, you know, my world of theater, my world of fragrance, my, and I'm going to be doing interviews and talking to people and really talking about the world that I live in, which is, a most amazing, magical, wonderful world. And I'm so excited to be here. Well, your passion is is infectious. And I feel like a lot of the success, you, success you've had is because of your love of people. You're definitely a hard worker. And those opportunities open up to you because you're in the right place at the right time and doing things for the right reason. You know, I have to say um, how excited and grateful I am to have come to America. Um, you know, I grew up, my mom was an amazing artist. She, uh, her, she, her name was Grace Phillips. In fact, yesterday was her birthday and I celebrated her birthday on my Facebook page. Um, and I really do believe that you have to have passion. You have to have a dedication for what you do. 
you have to know what when to say no, but you also have to know when to say yes, and you have to work your you know what off. Yes, because it's it's and I have done that. You know, um, I think it's important to recognize. Uh, my father once said the hardest word in the world to say is no, and I take on a lot of projects, but. Sometimes you have to learn to say no, but there are times when you have to learn to say yes. And sort of from a leadership standpoint, when I when I talk to people and I've been an adjunct professor at FIT and LIM, to navigate those difficult transitions can be challenging. And you have to also have a sense of self and belief in yourself that you know the right thing to do. So uh, I, I, I feel very grateful that I've that I have my own business and I'm able to do the things that I do and to help people, which uh, really makes me so excited that I'm able to take my passion for what I love to do that is now helping people. Absolutely. And how do people get a copy of the book? Well, they can go on Amazon. They can go on Barnes and Noble. They can go on my app, Sue Phillips app. And they can go to Sue Phillips Fragrance. But Amazon is probably the easiest way, but it's the power of perfume. Well, I love it. It's been such a pleasure getting to know you. And I just I just love your story, this whole progress that you've made. And I love your that you're back acting and that you haven't had to leave that behind either. <laughs> That's fine. And I'd be so happy to send you a copy of my book. And if you would want to offer one to one of your readers as a lucky mm-hmm. offering mm-hmm. to any one of your your leaders uh, your readers i would be happy to do that and to sign it as well and oh i love it we'll we'll absolutely do that and we'll link to it in the description for everyone to check out sue <laughs> thank you for spending time with us and and uh, just what a great example of you know the american dream of passion of working hard of caring for other people it's just i'm fascinated to see where you're going to go next because i don't think you're done yet I'm not done yet. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. Jay, thank you so much for this. I really love talking to you, and thank you so much for having me on. Once again, I want to thank Sue for joining us. What an amazing story of coming to America, following your dreams, being open and ready for opportunities, and just working hard. Uh, I'm very excited to follow her and find out what her next projects are. And I want to thank her for her time today. And I want to thank you for joining us on another edition of Preferred Professionals of America. My name is Jay McFarland.